All right, so what we've got here is that next step I was talking about. Going over my lines and shapes with color pencil. Uh, to be honest, I probably pressed a little harder just so you could see the different colors on camera. I would use a nice light hand. That way, if you are rendering with color pencil or adding any value in the way that's supposed to make things look 3D, which of course comes later, as you can see, it's pretty, looking pretty flat. Um, your outlines aren't too hard because as we know, that can make things look flat again. If you remember our shading unit when we did our spheres and I showed you guys how putting an outline around things can make them look flat again. Anywho, the other thing is uh, colors coming up actually not accurately on camera. So I'll have to show you guys in glass, which I will, but I'm filming this too to post. So actually that's, uh, believe it or not, a uh, pinky red. A yellow green same here and then these are yeah orange but not 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 really that kind of orange more of a peachy orange and then it is yellow in the in the bird but uh, I would say less mustardy so somehow this is coming up definitely more neutral colors than those that I used as you will see for those of you guys who are in class those of you who aren't I hope you can kind of appreciate what I mean I use the color pencils from our box and in uh, most cases, uh, just a uh, straight up color. So not, don't have anything fancy that you guys don't have. Um, yeah, so I traced over the shapes with the colorish main color that I'm gonna use in those areas. So when I look back at the photo, incidentally, which I do, of course, uh, to even when I don't wanna go for natural color, you know, I wanna stay in a, in a color family in this case. So I went back and looked, the maple keys are actually yellow green up here and pinky down here so that's why it's yellow green here believe me it is i know it doesn't look like that on camera but it is it's a yellow green not a evergreen color and then down here not this dark red but rather uh kind of a light red which is of course pink and then up in the bird i used yellow because his body is a couple different shades of yellow and in the wings it was kind of this like peachy color as well as in the feet and the in the in the beak so I used kind of an orangey color there and I will be adding more color to this right I'm gonna start thinking about shape next and then after that once I start to put big shape colors down in the next step um, I will either be using color pencil or watercolor as the case may be um, to add the value the shadows right and um, I might use some watercolor for that too. Some darker and lighter watercolor areas. Later would be the big shapes. And then when there's shadow, I might have a darker value of watercolor. But I think that I'm going to use watercolor uh, quick for the big shapes. And then if I want to do more of the color rendering and showing value, I'm going to use the color pencil on top. So that's my plan. And I'm kind of sticking to it. Um, as artists do, allowing myself to change things along the way with what is working in front of me. Uh, first up, remember we talked about back to front and then big shapes down to small shapes and then last, texture and line details, the little tiny details on top. Uh, so I'm going to start with my background, whatever color flat I decided to put down there, I'll do that first. And then I'll start to do light value, very light value washy watercolor in the shapes. That's the plan.